Dr. Oz reveals natural remedies even doctors trust. See how holistic ways to heal your body has gone mainstream. More and more medical professionals are suggesting other more natural treatments. Alternative medicine? Do alternative therapies help with pain management? Herbal supplements, acupuncture, chiropractics, and massage. Thanks to public demand and an increasing amount of positive research, many doctors are embracing some alternative therapies. These therapies could certainly help improve your mood, decrease stress and anxiety. If I'm on the verge of a cold or just need a little support, it's very easy, but it really harnesses the beauty and power of natural ingredients to boost your wellness. These treatments, once considered fringe, are now becoming part of standard healthcare. But what's driving this shift? Well, there's a whole lot more studies that have shown these therapies to be quite effective, and patients are asking for it. This whole movement towards self-care. What is acupuncture? Acupuncture is a form of Chinese medicine that's been used for thousands of years. Acupuncture works in two major ways. One, endogenous opiate release, and two, down modulation of sympathetic upregulation. Did you get all you that? Dumb that down? Yeah. And now, now in, 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 in human speak, that means it makes the body release its own naturally occurring painkillers oh, and gem. naturally occurring feel-good chemicals, and it also helps to relax the nervous system. It calms that fight or flight response, you know, that kind of tightens everything up in the body and it loosens it all up for you. All the acupuncture points are in areas where there are a lot of nerves, uh, a lot of mast cells, which are for immune system, for the immune system, and also uh, for the lymphatic system. So when you do acupuncture, you're improving circulation. Chiropractic care originated in the late 1800s when D.D. Palmer proposed that spinal adjustments could improve health by addressing spinal alignment. Today, over 35 million Americans, about 10% of the population, seek chiropractic care annually. Inside these joints, there's a liquid. Inside the liquid, there's a gas. It's nitrogen gas, actually. And because of a physics principle, as you open the joint up, the gas pops out of the solution. And when you get a good adjustment, or you get a good release, you're going to get better movement to the joint. And one of the benefits of chiropractic adjustment is you'll see an endorphin release. That's generally why people actually feel good getting adjusted. So we're releasing that gas, we're getting that better motion in there, people move better and start to feel better. Herbal medicine, like acupuncture, has ancient roots. Cultures worldwide have relied on plants for healing, and herbal supplements remain one of the most popular complementary treatments. In the U.S., Americans spend over 30 billion annually on out-of-pocket complementary healthcare approaches, with the herbal supplement market expected to grow by 6 to 8 percent annually. Globally, 80% of people rely on herbal remedies as part of their primary health care. This resurgence could be driven by a desire for natural health solutions, sustainability, and self-sufficiency, as well as increased access to knowledge through online courses and resources. Now, one of my absolute must-haves is dandelion root, which is amazing for liver function, digestion, blood sugar. It has anti-inflammatory properties. This is a super herb in my book. Why else are these therapies gaining popularity? A major factor is dissatisfaction with conventional medicine. Many feel mainstream treatments focus on symptoms rather than addressing root causes. People also seek more personalized and preventative care with providers. Now I've enjoyed every wellness treatment I've tried, not necessarily because of the therapy itself, but because of the environment the practitioners create, providing calm and compassionate care in a relaxing setting. Also, the influence of celebrities embracing alternative therapies have brought them into the spotlight, further fueling their appeal. Cosmetic acupuncture. Gwyneth Paltrow, Bar Raffaele, and Kim Kardashian are also to be fans. And there's more to this story. Integration of these alternative practices. Ancient remedies, they say, can exist happily alongside modern medicine. The two are complementary. You can go to a hospital to get modern treatment, but traditional medicine works well in prevention. This has become a belief for people. And then complementary medicine came along. And I happened to be in a room in the late 1970s with a guy called Stephen Fulder and a couple of other people looking at a report he'd written on alternative medicine. And he said, we've got to have a different word than alternative. Kind of supplementary to medicine, because that's, you know, doctor deferral stuff. Why don't we call it complementary medicine? And that was the birth of what we now call CAM. Complementary and alternative medicine, CAM, is increasingly integrated in conventional healthcare. 
Professor Avni Sali is head of the School of Integrative Medicine at Melbourne Swinburne University. Here is a man of science embracing alternative ways. Integrative medicine, which combines conventional treatments with proven CAM practices, addresses the whole person, mind, body, and spirit. A study done at UT Southwestern Medical Center found that one-third of cancer patients are already embracing complementary and alternative medicine. There's a wide range. They include things like herbal supplements, special diets, tai chi, yoga. Some alternative therapies like yoga and meditation have little to no side effects and may also help to lower the side effects that can sometimes come with conventional treatment. Even energy healing techniques like Reiki, therapeutic touch, EFT tapping, meditation, and sound healing, though controversial, are generally considered safe and non-invasive. The frequencies from these instruments actually put you in theta brainwave mode, which creates an environment for serotonin. So it really helps reduce stress and take those anxiety levels down. When you do the cold exposure, you're seeing increases in dopamine, norepinephrine, and epinephrine that are two to three X above baseline. This is huge. Wow. This is huge. This is on the order of many drugs, but the difference is most drugs spike dopamine and then drop it below baseline. The increases in this case are lasting many hours, two to four to even six hours. Non-drug treatments are very important. There's already a lot of data uh, that supports their use as first-line treatments for a lot of different types of pain. Physical therapy, for example, relaxation techniques, acupuncture, uh, manual therapies. These are all things that really should be tried first. It's crucial to approach alternative therapies with an informed perspective. Consult with your healthcare provider to ensure treatments are safe and effective. So what's the future of alternative therapies? As integrative medicine continues to grow, combining ancient wisdom and modern science, Alternative therapies will play an increasingly important role in holistic wellness. Sure enough, I woke up feeling at peace. That could have been the time away from the office, but I'd quite like to believe that everyone has an alternative therapy suited to them. If you have the elusive means and some serious powers of discernment, perhaps you too could be helped to help yourself in this new age of therapy. <laughs>